All right. Uh, so uh, can I request uh, one of us to just start us off with a word of prayer, please? Anyone, please go for it. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this chance, Lord, to, to hear about your worship, about your, how you, you'd like us to, to approach you, Lord, how, how you'd like us to com, com, commune with you, Jesus. And we pray, Father, as, as, Holy, uh, as Pastor Roshan uh, teaches us this morning, Lord, Holy Spirit, open our hearts to hear, open our minds, Lord, so that we may receive, Lord. And we pray for that you empower Pastor Shan, Lord, so that whatever he speaks, Lord, comes from you. And let him be blessed also through what he's doing. In the name of Lord Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Maggie. Uh, okay, so uh, let's get it on. with. We start today's lesson with Chapter 3 uh, in your notes. <clears throat> page 34 um, three uh, worship ministry uh, an introduction uh, to worship ministry okay uh, from this chapter it's going to get more practical uh, and very specifically uh, about worship ministry okay and most of the points not just some of the points most of the points that we will be learning about uh, can be applied uh, regardless of the size of your congregation or what ministry you are into right you might be here saying okay i'm not into worship ministry why am i learning this is it important for me but most of these points are very are very intentional it can be applied for any area of your ministry for personal uh, personal growth and also your ministry uh, growth as well okay and so uh, please uh, keep that in mind as we go through the content of this course. Uh, if if uh, references are made to uh, say music, musical instruments or skills or talents related to music, uh, we just keep that in mind. The course is all about that, and we will also learn about uh, the basic administrative functions of the worship ministry uh, team. Yeah, is that cool? So that's where we are uh, with uh, worship ministry. Um, is there anybody here involved in a worship team or you lead worship or you are leading a worship ministry? I may just ask. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so one of the things about uh, worship ministry is uh, I, I want to just start off talking about the challenges of leading a uh, worship ministry. Okay. Uh, it's worship ministry or leading a worship ministry and leading worship are two very different things. Okay. Uh, it, it, two very different things. So, leading worship is something that you would do uh, in a con to a con in a congregation, corporately, or a small group, whatnot, right? So, you would lead them in worship. But leading a worship ministry itself is uh, a whole different uh, ball game. Okay. So, overseeing a worship ministry is a challenging leadership task that requires insight and skill. Okay, overseeing a worship ministry is a challenging leadership task that requires insight and skill to grow in your leadership as you look at the ministry and whatnot, right? Uh, there are leadership and skill challenges that 
that comes with this uh, with this title of a worship pastor or uh, you know associate worship pastor or whatever if you're leading a worship ministry and whatnot right um, it's you have to take care of the dynamics of the entire team um, the band and whatnot and then there are these technical challenges that come with working with everyone from volunteer musicians to uh, worship arts leaders to sound team to the visual tech team uh, etc okay and and so those are just a few of the challenges right if you're leading a worship ministry you have the team in itself uh, that you're leading and then you also have to take uh, and a bunch of musicians who are like you know volunteers how do you handle them uh, it's another thing and uh, you have the sound team, which is very important. Uh, the sound and setup team for your church, uh, coordinating with them and the graphics team, the media team, uh, and whatnot. And we haven't even mentioned about the congregation, um, right? So, <laughs> uh, in my time, just being a worship leader and whatnot, I've heard quite a lot being said to me, right? It's to my face. Uh, as see guys I've been in this journey for uh, a good 50% of my life say at least 18 years um, you've had people say you know you're not my favorite worship leader I really don't like the songs you pick or how you lead them uh, and by the way also this is an FYI worship ministry or the worship team or the worship ministry uh, of a church uh, in my opinion uh, is the only team that gets the uh, highest number of opinions and suggestions <laughs> what do i mean by that roshan um, so it's like uh hey, why do you guys always do slow songs in the beginning why don't you do some fast songs uh, and why do you only do fast songs in the beginning why can't you do slow songs why are you doing only new songs why can't you do some old songs and why are you doing only old songs? Why can't you do some new songs? That's, <laughs> I'm hoping it relates. Some of you relate to it. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is not. It is. It's really not a pleasant place. Okay. Uh, if you think uh, the worship, the this thing of a worship pastor or worship leading a worship ministry is you're so fancy, being under the light and the spotlight. It's it's fun. It is fun okay it is it, it, when you look at it and from a different perspective when you see that it's it, it, you're just going with all your heart pursuing god uh and whatnot it's beautiful it's nice but then there is also this side the challenges that come along with it right uh the congregation um uh this leading the church you are leading the church right so um, that's in my opinion is worship ministry of a church and gets the highest number of opinions and suggestions and whatnot you know why because it is the worship ministry or the worship team of a church that sets the hunger and the desperation level for the whole of congregation right it is the worship team that sets the hunger for more of God, for more of His presence. We are the ones that set the tone, the level, or, or create that hunger for for the congregation to pursue God for more. Okay, uh, that's once again, in my opinion, you are free to defer and whatnot. But then, uh, once again, this is my humble opinion from what I've seen. If the worshippers in the worship team uh, are the ones uh, true worshipers of you know worshiping God in spirit and in truth f going after him pursuing after his presence the congregation will want to see will see that and want more of that you know because what they will see the, what the congregation see is the team on the stage uh, and the congregation below the stage uh, you know and the congregation always sees uh, it's it's like there's an invisible partition an invisible line or an invisible veil if i may say between the congregation and the team uh, and that can only be broken um, out of freedom because the river only flows down okay uh, hey uh, guys just give me one second there's some interference please give me a couple a minute please sorry
sorry guys my apologies okay um, yeah so uh, there are challenges um, so leading worship is one thing and leading a worship ministry is a whole different ball game as I mentioned okay so uh, we need all the help we can get uh, if you are leading a worship ministry if you are leading a ministry um, and if, if a worship ministry is under your supervision uh, your worship pastor um, your ministry leader will need all the help he or she can get uh, in the area so that we can reduce stress administratively and relationally okay so the challenges are real guys in worship ministry uh, it's 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 fun it's it's beautiful we get to pursue God and his presence as a collective as individuals uh, it, it, it's a beautiful season uh, that you know and I, I always keep encouraging my team uh, saying that hey you know we are in this uh, you know only for a, a season right and we have to make the most of it uh, in our pursuit uh, of the time that we have together all right I have Louis, uh, Louis do you have a question I see your hand is raised, Louis. Do you have a question? I can't hear you. you um... Okay. So I put on my video. So my audio. Good morning. Okay. Uh, do you have a question? Have you? No, I just want to. You said something that um, uh, that I think the 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 worship team in the church sets the tone for the hunger of the congregation. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that's a question or just a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up in Christ Embassy, Reverend Chris mm -hmm. uh, and most of the songs that was that sang were coming out of the teachings from mm -hmm. the man of God. So I'm trying to ask, is it that the pastor also sets the fabric or sets the texture of the message of the songs. So it's like congregation to the worship team, then the worship team to the pastor in that sense. Or it's just something that has to do with the, the impressions of the spirit just alone, or it comes from the fabric of the message that mm -hmm. informs the texture of the worship that mm -hmm. extends to the congregation as a whole. Is, is that, are we correct if we say that? Yes, absolutely. I uh, agree with you 100% over there. Uh, you know, but the premise that, that, you know, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, that opinion was my opinion, uh, you know, but then also you are right uh, on the nail when you say that, yes, you know, it's the our senior pastor also sets uh, the culture, the tone, the hunger level and everything for the rest of the congregation. Right. And we learn more about it in the next chapter as well and how important it is to communicate with your senior pastor. Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of setting the culture uh, for the for the congregation, for the church itself. Yeah. Yes, say, uh, I see your hand. Anyway. I just wanted to chip in in support of your opinion is that I think the worship team have a very, very critical role in setting the atmosphere for the word of God to yeah. drop in the hearts of people. Yeah. And so it's not just basically coming to mark time because there's worship on the agenda for church. Yeah. What's interesting people will basically to create an atmosphere yeah. where the heart of people will be receptive to God and they can just fix their eyes on Jesus. It's just yeah. I just share that in support of what you said. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, I appreciate that. Uh one of our our first album as APC, uh right, uh the Untiring Love album. Uh, was birthed out of Pastor Ashish's uh, sermon series on the Psalms. So he wanted to do a sermon series on Psalms. And uh, so, you know, he, he approached the team and said, okay, hey, can we write some songs together around the Psalms that we, that we will be talking about? And so that's what the team did. We got together and we started writing songs. And <laughs> one year later, the al uh, album came out. Um, so, yeah, and this is in... Uh, uh, in response to what Louis was also saying, and it's beautiful. Charles, uh, you, yeah, you see your hand being raised. Yeah, <clears throat> just uh, it, it's not um, a, 
a question but seeking clarity and maybe seeing whether it would be applicable. For instance, if the worship team is preparing the songs that they are going to do for a service that is upcoming, would it be advisable to know the theme for the pastor that he is going to speak from so that they can prepare the songs for worship and praise uh, following the theme? That is what I was thinking about. Um, yeah, so uh, hold on a second. Let me just uh, share this with you. Uh, I... Sorry, guys. One second. Okay. Uh, you are still able to hear me, right? Thanks. Um, so what you are seeing, uh, what you are seeing is the worship team roster uh, that that is being sent out to the entire worship team. Uh, I'm not going to sh show the whole uh, roster and whatnot. So here you see uh, we started. Uh, we are having this uh, sermon series going on faith and science. And uh, for the, the Sundays and the dates, so uh, all the sermon titles are being sent out to the team. So the team that is leading, so we have a bunch of worship leaders. Uh, this is also uh, how the roster looks like. We're kind of jumping the gun here, but that's okay. Uh, so every worship leader, with this, these are all the locations: central, south, north, east, west. Uh, so when they look at this tab, they know okay what is the sermon series, and uh, and uh, so they can. Um, prepare accordingly and and so now we know that the sermon series are on faith and science we look for songs that is around uh, creation uh, you know things like songs like indescribable god of wonders and so they, they they can prepare well so i hope that answers charles thank you okay thank you. you're welcome yeah, cool. Uh, so worship ministry is beautiful. The time of worship in the church is also uh, is, is it's crucial. So, uh, yeah, with that in mind, uh, let's move on. OK, so uh, we as ministers, worship pastors, worship ministers, uh, ministry leaders, uh, we need all the help we can get to reduce uh, the stress level administratively and relationally, et cetera, et cetera, because the challenges of leading uh, the worship ministry is real. OK, um, so. Uh, in this journey, um, all there are four relationships in this uh, ministry that make or break us. Okay, uh, each of the four areas of worship ministry, uh, the following four relationships um, is is not just an exhaustive list. Okay, uh, there are a lot of relationships involved in our life that demand our attention and 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 whatnot. But uh, again, talking putting it into our context, if we are to succeed in the task of building an effective worship ministry, um, I've zeroed it down to these four points here, okay? Um, the number one is, all these four points are very basic, but then it's so crucial, foundational to, a, uh, to uh, our life as ministers, okay? First one, our relationship with God. How many of you think it's important? It's one or two, yeah. We cannot compromise uh, on this point, isn't it? Uh, yes. Our relationship with God, right? Uh, it's crucial. It's foundational. It's uh, we just can't say it's important and move on. It's it's everything, right? Everything uh, that that overflows from you is birthed in within you from this this point your time with him your relationship uh with him uh, how intimate uh, uh are you uh with him right uh so never compromise your secret life with god or confuse it with your public ministry activity okay uh never compromise your secret life your time with god or confuse it okay this is a big deal uh and and I've seen it happen. It is possible that we can get confused with our public ministry activity as 
a continuation of our relationship with God. No, that is different. This is different. You need to get alone with Him. You need to, uh, you know, seek His presence, pursue His presence, uh, spend time with Him, reading His Word. Um, you know, so uh, your physical health, your emotional well-being, uh, your uh, your authority as a spiritual leader, everything hinge on this, right? Uh, in the first chapter, we learned about how David, uh, you know, he brought the presence back, isn't it? Uh, he was a visionary, so much to say. But it, and we can look back and see where it all began, right? When it when he first starts uh, goes to Saul and says, uh, you know, I'll take on Goliath. Uh, and Saul says, How can you do this? You're just a boy, uh, you know. But uh, and then David's response is beautiful, isn't it? He says, When I was tending my father's flock, my father's sheep, when a lion and a bear attacked. <laughs> Uh, you know, I went after it. I held the lion by its beard and rescued my sheep. Um, the imagery is beautiful, isn't it? And uh, you know, one of the f very famous quotes uh, Bill Johnson says uh, is, if you can kill a lion and a bear in private, God will uh, let you kill a Goliath in public. Um, right? So, and, and another feature about a shepherd boy uh, or a shepherd in that region is they would take the flock and go away into the wilderness area and the shepherd has been gone for a long time huge a lot of hours of the day and so you can imagine that david as a shepherd boy with his flock all alone only the flock as his audience he has so much of time for himself because he is alone and all he did during this time was write psalms worship him and his audience were sheep right so he was alone with god um and so we as leaders we as worshipers uh you know forgive me if this point is uh, too basic but we need to get back to basics sometimes. We need to remind ourselves as ministry leaders, as worshipers, uh, the importance of our relationship with God, right? If you can play an instrument, get on your instrument when there is no crowd uh, and just be a lead worshiper and don't just be a worship leader, right? So that's our uh, first one is our relationship with God. And, and the second point uh, that will make or break, uh, uh, break you, uh, in this journey as a leader is your relationship with your family okay um, our first church to which we must attend is our family uh, being a good husband a wife son daughter father mother or even friend is central to being a good worship leader or and an overseer of a worship ministry uh, need I elaborate on this I don't need to but then I just want to emphasize that and say, first, your relationship with God. Second, your relationship with your family. Um, uh, what face are they seeing uh, you know, at home? What face of yours <laughs> are, you, are they seeing at home? Um, right, so that, that is essential. Uh, and f the third one, which is getting a little bit more real now, is your relationship with your pastor okay your relationship with your senior pastor um, one of the most vital relationships in the local church is often one of the most neglected the relationship between the worship leader and the pastor of the church right um, and <clears throat> and most of the times uh, and this is again uh, I'm it's just out of experience. Uh, you know, it I've seen where because of miscommunication and because of a very uh, a relationship that is so frictional between a senior pastor or a worship leader or the worship team, because not every church uh, in India, at least that I've seen, has a worship pastor. It's just a worship coordinator or uh, who's volunteering for the church. Um, and and it is possible if there is um, no proper relationship between the two, uh, a lot of people can get hurt, right? The congregation gets hurt, the worship team gets hurt, the pastor gets hurt, everybody involved can get hurt. So this relationship is very, very crucial. 
okay once again uh, you know if you are the uh, pa if you are a senior pastor leading a ministry or if you are a worship pastor of a church uh, ask yourself this question how is your relationship with your pastor and how is your relationship with your worship pastor okay both ways um, right so let's talk a little bit more about what makes a uh, what can make um, a healthy relationship between the two okay the senior pastor and the worship pastor so uh, god intends that a mutually cooperative uh, unity prevail between the senior pastor and the worship pastor right god has blessed each of us with abilities that are uniquely our own and we must be content with our gifts the pastor and the worship pastor are not in competition you need to understand that uh, each is able to contribute in areas that make the ministry of the other more effective. Each is able to contribute in areas that make the ministry of the other more effective. Okay, so I just want to pause there and say and remind us once again of what we learned from a worship ministry in the Old Testament uh, with the couple of scriptures that we read back then. Uh, one of the things that kept standing out was unity, right? When they did something with a unity, with one voice, when they lifted their, you know, when they played together as one, when they sang together as one, there's something beautiful that happens uh, in unity and we need to get that, right? And there was something else that I learned, uh, I saw uh, firsthand in 2018, I think, uh, we had uh, something called a big Sunday during Christmas time. Uh, it's a, it's one of those Sundays where at APC, we uh, it's like an evangelistic uh, Sunday. We ask our church members, our congregation to invite all their friends, their unbelievers uh, to come to, uh, you know, come to church. We encourage them to do that every Sunday. But then just that Sunday, we say, we specifically say it's going to be more like an evangelistic Sunday. So it's a big deal. Okay. It's, uh, it's like uh, a nice celebration where every team is doing something like right, from the worship team to the children's church and uh, the, the arts team, you know, dance and arts. Uh, what not so um you know it was that time it's also uh, every team is like uh you know kind of discussing about okay hey when when are you guys practicing when are you guys doing this uh you know when when is our time uh, when are we when are we going to get the stage to run do a rehearsal and whatnot and uh and one of them responded uh, by saying it's like hey no no we can't give you the slot because it's our time we have to uh, we have to do this uh, you know things like that can happen it happens <laughs> and so one of the team member responded so beautifully he said hey guys we are not in competition we are one okay we are doing this together as one it's not that you're a different team we are a different team it's not we versus you we are all in this together from the children's church team to the worship team to every other team right and so let's see how we can accommodate each other and um so simple communication like that goes a long way isn't it and i'm sure you all have been in scenarios like that and relate to um but yeah, anyone been in something like that? <laughs> Exchanged unpleasantries and also resolved. Okay. Right. It's only Kung. So then Kung, I guess it's just me and you then. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Coming back to this uh, point, right? Our relationship with our pastor. So here are a few things that can help um, uh, us in our relationship with our senior pastor and vice versa, okay? So for the first one, once again, basic, respect, right? Worship pastor needs to respect by submitting to his authority, accepting the direction and the decisions of the pastor. Right, the pastor should now the senior pastor should respect to the worship pastor by not constantly interrupting or preempting the worship pastor's methods without consideration. Okay, once again, one of the lessons that we learned from David's worship team, the way he set up from First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, was all of them, all of the 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 Asaph, Heman, Jerithan, and their sons, they were all under the supervision of the king. And so, right, we need to uh, respect that. And uh, if you're leading a ministry of a church, what is the senior pastor's vision for the church? You can't just come in and say, I'm the worship pastor now. 
I'm going to take off in an opposite direction because this is what the Lord has spoken. He said, thus says the Lord. We, that, that's not going to happen. Right? That's clearly not for the Lord. Uh, right? uh, we need to learn to respect and honor uh, the vision of our senior pastor. Okay? It begins from there. And knowing that we are under the supervision of our senior pastor and he is accountable to God. Right? Um, and then it's also a message to the worship uh, to the senior pastor is like, hey, you know, sometimes it's okay. Give the uh, the worship pastor the freedom to fail, right? Uh, and we'll get to that point in just a bit again. Uh, and you know, just, just because the one is a senior pastor, what not? Uh, you've hired that person for a reason, knowing that okay, this person has skills that I don't, and so I'm going to trust this person with leading the team and not keep interrupting or preempting uh you know with their methods and considerations and whatnot of course having discussed about that that takes us to the second point of consideration okay with the first point as a premise we go to the second point which is consideration so when the pastor and the worship pastor have different ideas which in most case is the reason about what the direction the service should take each must have consideration for the other okay once again and you will have consideration when you have respect out of respect i'm going to hear you what you have to say and then you will hear me what i have to say because there is mutual respect right we understand each other i as a worship pastor i understand that i am under the supervision of my senior pastor and then he my my, my senior pastor also knows why he hired me, and so he will hear me out, <laughs> right? Uh, the worship leader should be considerate of the pastor, respect his, respecting his expertise, his experience, uh, his vision uh, for the church and whatnot. And the pastor may allow the worship leader to make mistakes due to lack of experience and correct him or her uh, gently in private after the service instead of public during the worship time. Um, right, so and we see the role of the pastor is to build up. Uh, we see that in Ephesians. So we'll read more about the role of the worship pastor in the chapters to come. Um, uh, Kennedy, hi. Uh, do you mind uh, uh, elaborating your question, please? Uh, hi, Kennedy, if you can hear me, do you mind elaborating on that? Okay, if you're talking, I think your mic is on mute, so. Okay, all right, so Kennedy says he will talk later. Um, cool. All right, so there's respect, consideration, and that also finally also leads us to the third point is communication. Okay, Amos 3 3 says, uh, Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? It's a beautiful verse. Uh, okay, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? And so there is no such thing as over communication with your pastor okay can i say that again there is no such thing as over communication and i've also learned this from leading a team okay this is uh, i don't know a, a pointer or a tip of leading a team is um there is no such thing as common sense Right. Um, so, as a leader, what uh, you know, what seems common sense to me, you'll be surprised to know that common sense doesn't occur that easily to a lot of people uh, in the team. So, if you think it's common sense and assume that the team is just going to do that because it's common sense to you, uh, it's not going to happen. And when that doesn't happen, you as a leader is the one who will get frustrated, angry, and erupt. Um, so, even if it's uh, some you know, a silly thing, uh, the most, the common sense kind of thing. 
communicated because uh, there is no such thing as over communicating in this context especially with your pastor okay so if either have an issue against the other if worship pastor is frustrated with the expectations of the pastor or if the pastor is upset with the worship pastor for not understanding the vision uh, etc the only solution will be found is an honest loving communication both need to remain humble and guard against pride right guys um, are you with me any thoughts anything else that you want to add uh, but uh, do you agree that uh, a relationship your relationship with the worship pastor uh, the senior pastor has to be healthy and it's important Yes, Christopher, please. Okay. Christopher raised his hand and left the meeting. So, all right. Thanks. Thanks for your response, guys. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, any other points that can be added to uh, what is listed here respect, consideration, communication, and how we can keep the relationship? Uh, healthy between the senior pastor and the worship pastor any of the points that you want to add you can add in the chat section or you can unmute and speak i can i'll add it in the next year's syllabus <laughs> hey uh, christopher i see you've joined back uh, again uh, is there a question that you'd like to ask yeah sorry uh my question is um, um with regards to, I mean, I agree completely with all the what you had mentioned. Uh, my only question is, uh, does this not also apply to uh, other pastors, pastors who are, uh, you know, uh, looking after branches in the church, and uh, not just to necessarily to the uh, worship pastor? So what you mentioned was, you know, the relationship of God with family and with the senior pastor. Uh, would this not be similar to to that to, to those pastors also? Absolutely, Christopher. So, uh, I mean, so when I when we began this, uh, the, the the chapter three in this class, I began by the premise by saying uh, this every most of the content that we will discuss, the points that we will discuss uh, is applicable uh, for every area of ministry as well, uh, re regardless of which ministry you are you'll be leading. And um, so in this, we're talking about these points more in context with only worship ministry. But then like you can talk about communication, uh, respect, consideration for of every area of ministry, right? Um, your relationship with your family is important regardless of which ministry you're leading. It's not just worship ministry. So, uh, and um, yeah, that's what I began by saying. And you're right, it, it's applicable for every area of ministry. Yeah, is that okay, Christopher? Okay, cool. Uh, Louis, uh, please go ahead. Uh, I, I think sometimes you have healthy expectations from the worship team um, because we use Bethel or Hillsong in our private worship does not mean we expect that um, from the worship team at certain levels. So I think there should be that expectation that they grow um, in the grace and the spirit of the house um, so that at the point in time, we can say that there was a journey um, in their skills, in their anointing, their graces. Um, yes. Then we cannot come to a place where we're celebrating them as our own worship experience. Yes. Um, but if you use better to worship at home, they come to church and expect that kind of a worship, then they don't have that skill set, they don't have that exposure. Yes. Um, there can be some kind of conflict with the um, worship pastor and the senior yeah. pastor. Yes. Um, then secondly, understanding how the, the pastor flows with the word of God and the gifts of the Spirit can also help. Because um, if if I'm under someone like Pastor Ashish that is more gentle and more calm in the disposition for the word, um, I don't bring that to a TDJX meeting. It might not work <laughs> because the, the sound and the, and the music... Um, yes. It's, it's going to be different. If I'm going to yeah. do a vamp for a Pastor Ashes, it might not allow him flow in the gift of the Spirit and in the communication of the Word. Yes. But if I can start playing a, a hymn for like a TDJ, I might not yeah. get the best of the personas. So yeah. I must also distinguish and, uh, the character of the person I'm under, I'm serving yes. under. So that yes. if I'm bringing um, a sound to help his administration of the Word, yes. it's more effective. 
that way, spiritually, the, the, the pastor, worship pastor and senior pastor can begin to come, can begin to bond spiritually, yeah. even yeah. without so much um, meetings. Just that because you are, Paul says, follow me as I, as I follow Christ. Yeah. So if you understand how God ministers to this person, then it can help you as a worship leader to coordinate your team yeah. to help him um, function better when he's ministering. Just yes. my own observation. Yeah, thanks, Tui. Yeah. Um, yes, I think uh, if we were to simplify it, uh, as in uh, to just put it into maybe one or two words, one is definitely uh, maturity or spiritual maturity. And the other one I would say is being sensitive to uh, what, being sensitive to God, of course, to the moving of his spirit and also being sensitive to the congregation that you are leading. <laughs> Right, um, like just as you mentioned, the, the congregation's background, or you know, the the demographic, the average age group of the congregation, everything. It's all about coming. It, it comes down to serving, right? You're serving God. You're serving your senior pastor. You're serving your congregation. It all comes down to that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. And um, I just want to, uh, you know, the last point before we take a break um, the, this other relationship the fourth point is your relationship with your extended team members right because at the end of the day if you are the worship pastor you're leading a team and um, if you don't care uh, for your team if your relationship with them and their relationship with you is not healthy um, it's going to be <sighs> Yeah, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, it's in Hebrews 3.13. We all know this verse. So encourage one another as long as it's called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Right. So uh, just keeping in constant touch uh, with your team, encouraging them individually, checking on them. How are they doing? How is their walk with God uh, spiritually? What's happening in their life? Just being proactive and not just reactive, but proactive about... Uh, genuinely taking interest in their life as like, hey, uh, you know, getting to know them, catching up with them for coffee and uh, and whatnot, and creating a, a culture, uh, a kingdom culture, and not a culture of criticism or backbiting, etc., uh, etc. Et right? Uh, encourage your team members to be difficult to be offend. This is uh, offense is a huge part that can. Uh, that can break a, a team, that can destroy individuals or teams, right? Offense, getting offense. So uh, there's a wonderful book uh, you might already know. There's an APC publication called, uh, you know, Offense. It's a small 30-page book, I think. Um, so creating a culture, a healthy culture, a kingdom culture uh, of encouragement, uh, you know, as being there for one another, a, a culture of community, uh, you know, a, it's so many things, right? All the healthy culture that you can think of uh, is very important. So you as a ministry leader and your relationship is very crucial with the team members that, uh, that you are leading. Are you genuinely taking interest in their life, right? Um, so, and also having said all of this, uh, the, in, the, in the last uh, three lines of that point, it is also vital that I mentioned here that the relationship between members of the opposite sex must always be uh, kept above board with people keeping and respecting appropriate intimacy boundaries, both in public and in private. Uh, right, it cannot be stressed uh, enough on that. Uh, one of some of the guidelines that we have, uh, at least at APC, is that uh, if you're meeting with uh, a, a lady member of your team, they will have to meet uh, me and the church office. Uh, you know, and so there is no uh, meeting individually, privately in a cafe or, or whatnot. So, uh, I mean, all of this is uh, just understanding the guidelines of the church, uh, respecting one another's boundaries, uh, especially when it comes to the opposite sex and keeping your character in check, your integrity in check. And all of that is very crucial as well, because you're not just going to be leading uh, men, uh, I mean, a team of the same sex, uh, right? So that's these are the four, uh, you know, relationship uh, that can make us or break us uh, in the journey of worship ministry. Okay, first thing is your relationship with God, your relationship with family, your family, uh, relationship with our pastor, and finally, uh, relationship with the team members. Okay, 
uh, we'll take a break now. We'll come back and resume uh, the second session. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.